Marching in the ranks of Montcalm's regiments, however, are hundreds of men who have everything to lose. Fathers and sons of the great Canadian families. D'Argenteuil, Courtemange, Repentigny. Francois Clément Boucher de La Perrière. At 51, he feels his age. I can no longer see clearly now, he says, though I have glasses on my nose. Not far from him, the next generation of his family, René Amable Boucher de Boucherville. The Bouchers are defending almost 150 years of family and history. Charles Deschamps de Boisbert spent two years protecting fleeing Acadians from the British. He leads the Acadian militia this morning. Under him, Joseph Trahan, 18, an Acadian who escaped the deportation. This morning, he's a refugee and a soldier at arms. One of the first to arrive is the French artillery commander, Montbéard. He scans the plains below him. The British line is a mile wide. Montcalm orders a general advance. At approximately 10 o'clock, the Battle of the Plains of Abraham begins. It is a textbook maneuver. Montcalm's army will advance in a massive column. It will sweep down the hill and smash the thin red line. But the French line that started down the hill is uncoordinated. And after a short distance, the first mistake. Someone gives the order to halt the advance and fire. volley is pointless. The British are far out of range. The French resume the advance, their lines more confused and disordered with every step. Wolf's soldiers wait. When the French are within 40 yards of the British, they form for their second volley. This time they can see the faces of the men in the British line. reload, the British take position to fire. Back, ready. Finally, in the smoke and confusion, James Wolfe issues the most important military command of his life. Devastating. A mile wide burst of concentrated fire. The French line is dazed but stands its ground. Uh, 
Then the Highlanders unleash an advance with broadswords that can slice a man in half. Joseph Trahan of the Acadian militia is right in front of them. I was amongst the fugitives and received in the calf of the leg a spent bullet, which stretched me on the ground. I thought it was all over for me, but presently I rose up and continued to run. The British are within reach of the gates of Quebec, with the Highlanders leading the charge. Until they are stunned by a barrage of fire from the surrounding woods and fields. Hundreds of Canadian militia and Indians cover the retreating French army. The first wounded are brought to the General Hospital and to Marie de la Visitation. Even though the French vastly outnumber the British, Vaudreuil has decided they will not fight again the next day. He orders the soldiers to abandon Quebec 